I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Because you're doing fantastic. Back from training here, and uh, just gonna play a few games, and uh, you know, with the uh, the destroyers on tier nine at rank that is. And I just play for steel now. It's pretty fun. Uh, I like it kind of better than clan battles right now. Clan battles is at tier eight. But uh, as always, before we get in, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support of the channel. If you want to be a part of this community and uh, help us grow along as well, and uh, appreciate all the supporters. As, uh, and we can't thank you guys enough. We've been having a blast doing videos like this and learning something from it and having a good time and making good friends at the same time. So um, let's get to it. Uh, just playing tier nine, Johnston tier nine. We'll talk about that in a bit and uh, we'll just see new updates and everything going on lately in the world of world ships. But um, a little bit about my life going on right now. I uh, just got done with training and uh, we just finished up uh, training for uh, airline transport pilot stuff. Um, if you didn't know what that is, go Google it. It is basically one of the prerequisites to becoming an airline pilot. Um, I'm at that stage of my life where, hey, I need to start worrying about the future after the military. And uh, one of that, since I'm a heavy guy, which flies big air, you know, big airplanes and everything flying all over the world, uh, I might as well use that to, you know, benefit from it. And uh, I just finished the AT, ATP CP and ATM test, which is required prior to doing your actual practical and uh, check ride for and getting a type rating in a particular aircraft. And uh, that'd be pretty cool. Hopefully, uh, when I finish that, then I'll apply to the airlines and uh, see if they have me or not. Right there, Yorktown dropping some smoke. Um, but yeah, if you guys don't know what all that process is, Google it. I had to Google a lot of the stuff. I'm still learning from a lot of my airline buddies. And um, yeah, they say it's totally worth it. Get it now. Get it soon. And uh, you know, it's uh, pretty pretty cool uh, flying airline stuff. And I've been flying heavy four engine, multi engine aircraft, all, you know, majority of my life. So why not use that to to benefit uh, my life in the long run? But right off the bat, Z46, and uh, I'm going to hit the burst fire on. The cool thing about the Johnson, if you don't know, is that burst fire. This is the burst fire gimmick, which they actually recommend using that more. And I am really rusty at shooting right now. And I need a little bit. Ooh, we get some. Look at that. Look at the power of that right there. 1,000, 8,825. 8, so if you don't know what that is, the burst fire, uh, for those that are new to the channel, it, it reloads in seven and a half seconds, but you get three bursts in quick succession right there. 1.17 seconds interval between each one. And they kind of recommend using the burst fire and the, the Johnson more because if I just turned it off and did the reload with 3.8, it, it, they said it kind of the math people on YouTube and everything, and if you can do the math yourself, it kind of evens out anyway, so watch this. So we're going to do a one-on-one -on -one engagement with the Z46. I believe... I don't think he has Hydra, but look, it's better just to kill him outright this way. And there... Yeah, he's got the Hydra. That's why you got to get out of here. So we're going to engine boost our butt out of here because I know I can't engage, so why not just uh, do the shimmy shimmy shake shake way? He's got an advantage on me. He can fire and uh, kill me this way. Aircraft here is also spotting me. Yep, we're going to just left, right, left, right, throw off his shots right there. That's a good destroyer player right there. We're taking all the fire. See, he's being distracted now. Okay, now that they're outside of his five kilometer, now it's always good to know, you know, hit tab and figure out what does the enemy have. Five kilometer range. There we go. He's out of the smoke. We're going to go ahead and seal the deal with this shot right here. Just lead him a little bit. And that's what the power of the burst fire is right there. Hopefully we get that kill. And I completely missed that one. Yeah, that's the power of the, the sap shells right there. Pretty, pretty, pretty darn strong. Again, you got to know your enemy. Know your enemy before you fight them because... Oh, oh come on. Let's get him. Sorry, guys. I got to stop talking when I'm trying to aim. Okay, hopefully you get it. Yeah, there you go. Way to go. So we did the majority of the damage off the, um, the Z46 right there. Obviously, rushing to your death, not the funnest move. But like I said, right there knowing your strengths, knowing your weaknesses. I knew he had a Hydro, so I was already turning away, and he launched torpedoes, so slammed on the brakes and turned away. That is the role of a good destroyer player. Also, staying alive is a big, big key component of that. You know, no need to r throw away your ship right off the bat. So we've got this uh, hipper trying to push in, so why not help our teammates by really just pouring on the hate, and we're going to focus fire on him. He's probably the next guy right here. A good destroyer always, always stays alive. That's the <laughs> biggest name of the game, right? You are probably the most vulnerable and the most powerful at the same time. You do not want to die right off the bat because the, the, the enemy, or I'm sorry, the friendly team needs your spotting and they need your torpedoes, need your guns, need you to hunt down other destroyer players. Now, this guy's probably just rushing to his death, so we're just going to have free shots right here. Look at the power of the sap shells, man. Even though this is like a small little you know gunboat destroyer the, the sap shells do pack a wallop Ooh, and this guy is taking torpedoes out the wazoo that's not good 
We lost our Siegfried to Hipper Torpedoes, so let's see if we can try to take this guy out. As, ooh, somebody's shooting us, so you can see the exclamation point, and he's dead. There we go. Somebody shot at us, and yep, there's the shot right there from the Buffalo, I believe. Yep. As soon as I saw the exclamation points, you know, tick up, uh, I knew that somebody had just fired at me. That means you need to change your vector, change your speed, do something different that causes you to be a moving, uh, a very difficult target to hit. So right now we got the primary focus on the Wu Jing. Go ahead and launch some torpedoes into him, and hopefully this, he runs him to him right there. I also still have smoke, so. Uh, I think this guy is pretty much dead. So let's see if we can finish the deal right here. I love this burst fire. This burst fire is pretty cool. And look at it. Even angling won't do much against sap shells. Look at the sap shells. They're doing so much damage. Look at that. That's the cool thing about the Johnston. It's just the power of that sap shell and the burst fire. It is this, it's its gimmick right there. And it is so, so freaking powerful. I mean, against everything. Cruisers, battleships, destroyers especially. But And we are just melting this guy. Yeah, this is the power of teamwork right here, guys. So why it's really difficult to push in a battleship these days. It's just so, with the amount of power, submarines, CVs, uh, torpedoes, everything, the gimmick is just in favor of, you know, the other classes rather than the battleship. But anyways, uh, so as a good destroyer player, I'm supposed to stay alive to capture the points, spot the other destroyers, and torpedo everything. And I got the, uh, the uh, smoke if I need to lay down smoke for my teammates. Teammates are also good communication between the teammates. It's also effective using this mini map. Blow this mini map up, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know already, if you haven't seen by the time, by the amount of people that you've watched on YouTube, notice that the majority of the best players are using situation awareness and blowing up the mini map to the, your advantage because not knowing where the enemy's at or not knowing where you're needed, it, it, you might as well not be playing, right? So you always want to stay uh, focused uh, in, in your head on a swivel in the game, always looking for next opportunities to, uh, you know, to. Uh, employ your ship to maximize effectiveness and help your team out because this is a team sport is not this is not like oh i'm going to win the game although it may look like that at sometimes you don't win the game all by yourself you have to use everybody's skills and abilities in order to win that's why i still i think pq um, potato quality just did a video talking about yeah it's not just a yolo kind of a uh, style game it's you're actually you know working together using everybody's um skills communication abilities to actually uh, play the game and you can't just go in there w key everything i think uh flam flambass just did a video also talking about or no it was uh trend last trend last is the one that had a video where he was in um a uh a cruiser and he was spamming everybody because of his other teammates were laying down smoke they were spotting for him doing everything possible to uh you know enable the power of that ship rather than just rely on um, just purely on the ship itself it, it, the ship is only good with the amount of teammates around you. So let's take a look at this. Okay, look at the power of the sap shells right here against the uh, the dreaded Jaeger here. And he's actually firing against me now. He's got torpedoes. Now, where's that island? Always look around. I a right mouse key, look around. Hey, where's the threat? I think I can survive this. Yeah, it's not too, too bad. So let's see if we can survive a gun on one-on-one -on -one gun battle here. Yeah, he's dead. Power of the Fletcher. I love the Fletcher style of destroyers. Look at that. The amount, the amount of maneuverability and power, the ability to turn, stop, start, juke. I mean, it's just awesome. I, I love the, the Fletcher class destroyers. They're very, very powerful, very, very effective. And, uh, man, you can just see why I like the Johnson so much. I like the Fletcher as well. If you haven't grinded the Fletcher, get the Fletcher. It is really, really awesome. So powerful. And uh, the, the torpedoes are powerful. The guns are great. Smoke is awesome. Uh, AA is trash, like always, but it's better than most other destroyers, as you saw right there. Um, yeah, really, uh, the Tier 9 and the, the Fletcher class is really, really strong and powerful if you don't have it already. Uh, Johnson was released for some kind of gimmick for massive amounts of money. They like get to buy doubloons or get the loot boxes, whatever it was. It was just a lot of money you had to dump down. Uh, I, I unfortunately bit the bullet for that. I mean, I didn't mind. I mean, I made money on YouTube. I made money on, you know, whatever. And that, that allowed us to, you know, buy it and go outright and buy it so I can do reviews on it and to see it. And now, I wouldn't have done that had I not seen other people play the, the, the Johnston and I saw the capabilities of what it can provide and uh, what you saw right there in the engagements against two destroyers. You definitely can see that, it, yeah, it is a fun destroyer to play with. Uh, maybe not so much in some more of the highly, highly competitive or maybe even uh, randoms. Uh, you can hold your own on randoms. It's not. I'm not saying it's a bad ship, but Tier 9 Johnson, I mean, just take a look at it. The only downside is torpedoes are not what I would like to be. I need them better reloads, and um, if they go out to a longer range, then uh, actually torpedo range is 13.5. Not bad. It's not not bad. I just wish the reload was better, kind of along the lines of uh, maybe Fletcher or gearing levels. 
Um, I would rather have had that uh, rather than, oh, man, do I get this? Oh, man, I'm outside of it. No, well, my teammates my teammates will get it. I wanted to get this point really bad. I, I just wanted to go after the carrier. Yeah, but is Tier 9 Johnson worth it? Not the money that I would say for most people out there to spend like hundreds of dollars on this thing. It's not worth it in that regard. But if it comes back and it's available for coal or steel, whatever, definitely. I would, I would actually take the time to get it because Tier 9's uh, Johnson and uh, Fletcher-like class destroyers are really darn fun. And I, I really do enjoy it. All right. So, yeah, there's my team. I'm just spotting from it. Here's another role that a good destroyer does, right? Capture points, spot the enemy carriers. Um, and, look, you get good jobs for that. I mean, the other teammates uh, do recognize your ability to uh, be a good destroyer player, and then you get uh, complimented on that. So let's see if we can go find this destroyer so some of my other buddies can shoot at it. You want to take a look at the AA? Um, I'll, I'll leave the AA on, and that way you can see how good the AA is or bad it is or decent it is, whatever. So I'm, just, I'm not going to fire. I'm just going to let my teammates fire. I get spotting damage. And feel, feel free, guys, to fast forward to the video. I'm talking live here, so I'm not really rehearsing this. I'm just, you know, playing live here and talking at the same time to give you an update on my life, uh, where we're at, and why I was gone oh, for so long. Dude, look at the sap shell damage right there. Yeah, so the next thing in my life I got to do... Oh, there we get this carry carol. Thanks, guys, for letting me have that. Anyways, that is... And here's a, the AA right there. Look at that. So AA is like Fletcher AA, whatever. Cool. It it's scratches paint on planes uh, and whatnot. And uh, it does what it has to do. So that's the Johnston for you right there. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm just going to go through a bunch of destroyers randomly just so you can see different play styles, different gimmicks. Yeah, uh, we did our job. Let's see, what did we do here? So 60,000 damage. So we're definitely on the two destroyers right here. Definitely I'll take on a bunch of damage from them. Uh, and that, that is your name. Of the, that is the bread and butter of the destroyer. That's why I like destroyer plays so much because you're focusing on killing other destroyers and then capping points. Those are the biggest two categories I would say that helps influences majority of the games. And you can see that as we play along. So, um, I'll go ahead and pick another ship for you guys and let's see here. Let's, let's try. Oh yeah. Here's another tier nine, um, kind of Johnson Fletcher kind of design. Um, the, uh, black, it's really awesome. Radar, smoke gimmick. That is his power right there. I'll, t I'll show you kind of uh, what that is right now. And uh, I'll, I'll pause the video here while uh, we load and I'll start up again. All right. We're back in the USS Black right here on Atlantic. And uh, again, feel free, guys, if you don't like uh, the initial just movement of uh, ships and just me talking, feel free to just skip on by this if you can. And um, I'm just talking as I'm playing live here and um, just kind of catching up with you guys and having fun. All right, so what are we going to do? As a good destroyer player, i got to go cap and spot. So since I'm the only destroyer and probably the most critical player on this team right now because I'm the only destroyer, um, I hate it when games are like this because now everything is relying on me because what do cruisers and battleships need? They need spotting. So I have to stay alive and also capture points. And oh, and by the way, hunt the other destroyer. Oh, and by the way, also torpedo and do all the other things that a good destroyer player does. So that's my job right now. And that's initial movement right here. I decided to go for Charlie. As you can see, it's, it buff, Bravo is easy to get. I mean, literally just one cruiser can go over there and cap it. But the hardest one is Charlie because it requires speed and maneuverability to get there. And all while you're getting shot at uh, from the northwest here, you can see guys are probably going to be coming from this direction, shooting through the mountains. And I have to go, you see, my, my goal is to drive straight up, keep moving, tap the uh, Charlie cap, see if it ticks up. Can I get it? And then if I get radar, run away. Also, a good destroyer player also looks at what are your threats. Is there a radar threat here? No, Benham is a torpedo machine gun. You got to watch out for him. And this guy does not have radar. This guy does not have radar. Those are the two biggest things I always check right off the bat to be a good destroyer player. So tips for the trade right there. Uh, as we're sailing, uh, and this is this is why I like airlines. You know, you were flying around at cruise, um, flying over the ocean and everything. You're just sitting next, talking to your co-pilot, and we're just having a discussion right here. So I'm having a discussion with you guys. You guys are my co-pilots right now. And... Yeah, I mean, uh, just getting the airline gig right going. If you don't know what that is, I already talked about it earlier, about just getting licenses and everything for it. Um, I'm thinking about flying 737s or A320s. Those are the type ratings for me that I'm going for right now. And hopefully get hired by an airline that flies those. Probably either, you know, Southwest, Alaska, or maybe American Airlines. Got a lot of buddies in those fields. So hopefully 
Um, I, I get the interview and uh, and then work on that. But I still got at least a, you know a couple more years in the military. Uh, but it's not and it's not bad trying to get hired first, get that line number going, and that way they hold your spot because I am in the military. They do have. They, by law, I believe there is something where you have to um, honor a military member to finish out their uh, orders or whatever that may be. So uh, the civilian airlines have to honor that. And uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty interesting. I'm grateful that they do things like that. All right. Right off the bat here, who is the Andalusia? So we're spotting them. And he's getting, ooh, here we go. He's getting shot at. So why not kill him right off the See if we can kill this guy. He's probably going to take a shot at us. Get ready to turn in. Oh, his guns are turning away, so I'm watching his guns. Always watch his guns. I just need to start a fire on him. My aim is really bad. I'm signaling. I hit space bar on this guy. I set a space bar to be like, hey, emphasis item on the guy I'm looking at. There we go. Good job, team. So we got to compliment our team for that. And give the three well dones. And then there we go. Now, the black has a downside. It's a Fletcher class. Guns are pretty good. They reload really awesome. Very lofty arcs. The problem is the torpedoes are 43 knot sea mines. And literally, these things are just land mines that are, or sea mines, you want to call it, where I'm just launching them out there and they take like literally an eternity. They move at the speed of smell, but they do hit with a wall up though. 21,600, 96 second reload. So they're really, really good reloads, really good damage. The problem is. Um, yeah, they, they move they move at the speed of molasses. I mean, you can see right there. I mean, it takes them a while to even get there. Look, we haven't even gotten to the wreckage yet, and the wreckage is already going to the bottom faster than my torpedoes can get there. All right, what did I say Good Destroyer does? He goes out there, spots. We spotted the cruiser. We spotted the enemy. And then we also cap the points. So my job right now is, let's see, right now, where am I needed? So Bravo, I don't know why the Siegfried at the bottom is not capping that spot, but I guess we're going to have to play this one by ear. Their battles, two battleships are up here, so I know the bulk of their firepower is this way. So I guess we're going to go in with a bow. Our team followed us, actually. That's interesting. So what are we going to do here? What are we going to do? Uh, let's see. Well, we could windle this guy down. They lost their destroyer is probably going to remove. Now, watch the power of their destroyer player. Now, the fact that there's only a one ship guarding Bravo, and then their Benham is over there launching torpedoes. You can see all those torpedoes are there. Look, this is exactly why the power of the, tor the uh, torpedo boat is so, so impactful, because he alone can cap and then keep our cruiser at bay and run away and he can just run them up and now they got alpha bravo that's the only downside I, I see right there where one little destroyer can take alpha bravo and they can win just based on points they don't have to kill everybody they could just just sit back and wait for us to come to them majority of our firepower is just moving with me so man my rpf is showing the john bards right there so what are we gonna do at this point well i could go after the benham and just take out their destroyer and help my team out. They're probably going to focus fire this Iowa down. Let's see if we can help uh, our team right here and spot the Iowa. I have a smoke in case I need it. All right, let's see. Let's make some decisions here. So I've got Iowa. Let's see where what's his vector going. So this is the middle vector. I don't know how to fix this. I know I have to update the video card or whatever, but this is kind of showing me where the torpedo should be fired to launch against him. So... We'll take one stab at the dark. See, it'll take an eternity to get there anyways. There's no radar in the area. John Bart is up in the north. He's not going to be a threat to us. This Iowa is still pushing in. We're going to wait to see what he does. Let's see. What is he going to do here? I can't really push the uh, the threat here. we got to get this Iowa. I'll launch one rack in front of him, and we'll wait. Uh, I'll just keep them spotted while my team shoots at them. Hopefully, they kill this Iowa before them. Oh, there's the other Benham. I knew it. Yep, he's over there. So let's kill, let's kill this Iowa first, and then we'll take care of the Venom later. Oops, crap! I had my AA on. All right, Iowa is dodging our torpedoes. So our concealment's great, by the way. Fletcher uh, kind of concealment, 5.8, really awesome. We are not going to play with this Brindisi. Um, my upper team is going for the upper battleships right now. Looking around, make sure I don't hit any islands. Uh, is it good? All right, good. There we go. I was almost dead. His guns are facing that way, so let's see if we can shoot. Let's see if we can start a fire in the Iowa. We got a smoke. We need it, so we're not too worried. There's one fire. That bee fired at us. That's good. It means they're not firing on my teammates, but dang, that hurt. Damn, we're taking way too much damage. All right, we're going to pop smoke right here.
I took way too much unnecessary damage right there. I just wanted this Iowa dead as fast as possible. That was my bad. I don't know why my teammate's not killing this guy. Come on, kill him. Okay, see, that's the problem with no spotting. Because I'm not spotting, uh, nobody can shoot the Iowa. That was my bad. I don't know why I did that. All right, let's go hunt this Benham down. See, see what a power of what one guy can do. Oh, crap. Okay, dodging torpedoes. I'm dead here, I think. If I can't kill this guy, my team is dead. Oh, yeah, I took those torpedoes. I'm going to die. I got to get this guy out. All right, good exchange. All right, so we killed their destroyer, but my team is just off in the distance. Hopefully, they win the game. But that's the power of what the, uh, the black could do. I just got too greedy at the end there. Yep, I should have hunted down that venom. That's that's a good lesson right there for you. All right, let's take another uh, destroyer out. Kitakaze, one of my favorites. Uh, big gunboat destroyer. This is like the Haragumo style of uh, destroyers. Anyway, while we're waiting, uh, just talking about what's going on in the world of warships right now, uh, the uh, biggest news, you guys get this, I heard that they're going to get rid of deton detonation mechanics in the game, where if you don't know what detonation is, it's essentially where if you took a one sh critical shot to maybe a magazine or took enough shots in one particular spot of the ship, I don't know what the RNG is, but basically your ship had the potential of literally exploding and removing your game with one fell swoop, immediately you could be at 100 percent health and boom all of it gone because of a detonation mechanic and the only way to mitigate that especially for destroyers is uh you would have to run a detonating detonation flag or debt flag or like people call it for short and the debt flag was there as a gimmick to get you to spend credits in the game so you would always have it um thank god that people were complaining enough where they said this is a pointless rng thing why even have this in the game uh it would just be like you in call of duty where you just all of a sudden just die uh, because you you tripped on a rock or something and this oh, all my health goes uh, it's essentially the same idea where your mistake was if you just took one shot in the wrong way and didn't have the penalty was you didn't ran, run a flag that was the penalty of the game oh you didn't spend 90 credits 90,000 credits or whatever it was to avoid yourself from blowing up if you got took uh, a shell you know and it could have been just a random shell and you can control where shells go. You're definitely going to get shot at in this game. I mean, World of Warships, you're getting shot at by other ships. You're definitely going to go and get shot at. Uh, if you took one wrong shell, boom, you're, you're dead, you're gone. Start over and uh, go play another round. Uh, that essentially was the, the gimmick of having that flag. But they got rid of it. I, apparent, or I'm sorry, they're going to get rid of it. And maybe the next update or iteration, whatever, it's coming out in the dev blogs and whatnot. I think a couple guys have already done videos on it. And I think that's really, really awesome, the fact that they're getting rid of that uh, mechanic. And uh, yeah, I don't appreciate it. I think it is a waste of uh, money, time, and effort. Uh, I don't think it really adds any benefit to the game other than, ooh, I, cool, I, I one-shot at a guy and that was it. I mean, well, I would rather one-shot if I actually earned it where I'm actually full, firing a full salvo and it actually went through and destroyed everybody. Or I'm sorry, I, I had good aiming and it all went through at one spot and it blew up the magazine of a ship. Okay, that makes sense. And it makes it, it makes it a little bit more uh, realistic in a sense. But if you just had one random shell or one random torpedo hit you and then you die and lose 100% of your health, that didn't, it didn't make sense to me. Uh, but it was really a gimmick just to get you to buy and spend credits. Uh, but yeah, they're getting rid of that. And um, I guess a couple up other updates in the games. I know they're coming out with more uh, of these ships and, you know, dockyard stuff. Uh, I think the dockyard ship that is in currently in place right now, I think some guys are doing reviews on it. I don't really care about it much. I, I'm not really into cruisers. Or if it's a cruiser slash battleship, I'm not really sure. But uh, anyways, we're going to Alpha Bravo here. If you can see right off the bat, I selected Alpha Bravo because I like to split the difference between the two. I'll use my RPF, which gives me um, information. I'm probably going to lean more towards the alpha side, and since my speed is able to get there, we'll peel off and go to the western sector and egress that way if I need to get out of dodge. What am I going up against? I'm going to sum you. They definitely outspot me. Look, there's 5.7, 5.5. I have a 6.1 detection, so definitely rough there. They don't have any radar. We have radar. They have an Imperanga, which is a um, Tier 8, uh, that the new Pan Asian, um, sorry, Pan American. Uh, what is it called? Uh, brawling ships that are really, really broken, by the way. 
So we'll avoid that. We'll make sure we uh, do that. If we do get spotted, we're going to go engage right off the bat, egress the area, and then pop smoke to, to hide our our our, uh, our ship detection. Helping out our Gronigan right here. We'll help him out. He's going to capture Bravo. That's good. And then we have a ship right here, right in front of us. See, RPF is indicating something right here. I alert my friends, let them know something is right there, and we are egressing already um, to the west. We're going to make sure that if we do get spotted, we will egress our area. We have an exit strategy, exit plan. There it is. There he is. I'm spotted already. We got the smoke already ready to go, and we are popping on a Yugamo. So he's probably launching torpedoes at this moment right here. We're going to go ahead and egress the area. And let's see. And let's. Ooh, he got stuck. All right, we're going to leave. I know that he's probably launching torpedoes at us. I'm going to hit my boot, my reload booster and get the torpedoes on him right off the bat. Let's see if we nail him. We'll get a lucky shot. Oh, I see a good thing I avoided that island. I do not want to get hit by that island. His torpedoes reloaded probably uh, just 30 seconds. He probably launched a spread at me somewhere. He's still in the cap, so hopefully we get a lucky shot on this guy. All right, we're going to turn back in. We got Gronigan support, so that's good. And Imparanga's that way. Hopefully these torpedoes will launch and get the guy. Come on, nail him, baby. Dang, he, he dodged those things. Okay, he got lucky. Yugamo is still inside that smoke because it's ca he just capped it. So let's see if we can get a lucky shot. Imparagna is coming in. I don't want to be caught in this area with him. If the Imparanga is actually pushing through, we better get out of here. We better get ready to get out of here. Nope, he's slowed down. All right, cool. There are the torpedoes. Come on, ground again. Where's your hydro at? He's still in that smoke. That's wild. All right, well, their team is sitting in the back. Our team is also sitting in the back. So we are pushing Alpha pretty hard right here. So let's see, where is that Imperang? He is too scared to move forward. That's good. We are capping Alpha. All right, so their Yugamo probably ran out already. I can't believe that Yugamo tried to fight um, a Kitakaze. We'll go do a gun battle. There he is. Ooh, he is in a bad position. The only way that Yugamo can move forward is or get out of there is moving forward. Yeah, I mean, he's going to reverse. No way, he's dead. Yep, way to go. So the, the amount of damage we did on, right off the bat to him was crucial because it helps the uh, Friesland kill that Yugamo really easily. And now Imparanga is getting shot at. And we're going to see... Yeah, we are not going to engage until we have smoke. Okay, is he preoccupied with him? Okay, now he's nose in. That means his guns are not facing us. His, his uh, secondary guns won't be able to hit us too hard because... Why? They're, he's nose in. They're not, they're not able to hit us. Now, look at that. He fired. I can't believe that. Be the guy that people fire at because, you know, you can absorb so much damage and uh, help your team out that way. Yeah, if you can get take shots from the enemy team, it takes one less shot from your player. So it's good that you know, you're getting shot at rather than your teammates. I like to do that more because you help your teammates out, you keep them alive, you're more likely to win the game. I'm doing a good job as a uh, gunboat destroyer. I'm taking the hits, taking shots. People are still firing at Look at that. People are still firing at me. They would rather fire at me than anybody else. And boom. There we go. That's how you do it. Everybody fire at the destroyer. Yeah. All right. And we take, we steal our buddy Gearing's smoke. And we, I'm sorry, not Gearing, Friesland. Steal the Friesland smoke and we, we uh, bum damage here. And this is exactly why it's so cool to have teammates that know what they're doing. All right, let's go help Bravo cap out. Looks like we have at least two of their ships down. Yeah, this pretty much is almost in the bag. But don't give up. We can always throw games, okay? Ooh, radar. Very nice. Good job, Alaska. See, Alaska doing the radar thing. Really, really awesome. So we're going to go ahead and flank the SOM on the right here while the freeze is going to take him on the left. So we'll launch a spread just in case. Sam is just too far forward. None of his teammates are supporting him. And that's another thing. If you don't support your destroyer, your, your games are going to end up like this. I mean, you, you don't protect your destroyers, you're going to lose the game. And that's why I've always said destroyer players are the most critical aspect of the game. 
and uh, you see, you no, some has no support whatsoever. So this is the lesson right here of what not to do as a big ship. If you're a cruiser or a battleship player, I mean, look at it. I mean, sitting in the back here does nothing. You might as well not even play the game. You, you're pretty much sabotaging the game for your your teammates. And uh, again, that's a big, big problem that I don't know how you can solve that with. With what do you you have to? Other only thing you can do is incentivize human behavior. It doesn't. It, this doesn't incentivize you to play the game if you're in the back. I don't know what you can do to force that player to move up and actually support your teammates and work as a cohesive unit. Uh, Wargaming might have to figure out how to reward bonuses for that. If you support or spot or do something, you have to show something that is legitimately, you know, reinforcing that behavior. Kind of like what Battlefield and Call of Duty do, where if you are spotting and supporting and lazing or shooting or blowing up something live, then they kind of show that, that point system tick off uh, real time and make it worthwhile. Otherwise, sitting in the back doesn't, I don't understand the logic behind it. You know, what do you get out of saving your ship? I've been trying to beat that into people's heads so much. It's like you don't get points for keeping your ship alive, uh, you know, a after the match is over. It just doesn't make any sense. You just you actually get charged money. You know, they actually charge credits for you using your ordinance or taking a ship into battle. And that's how they got people to play back in the day. Um, you had to understand the, the, the logic behind all that. So I don't know what people are thinking by, um, you know, trying to keep their ship you know, full health or keeping the, the HP even though you're losing the battle, so you don't get much out of it. I don't see the point of that, but oh well, what do I know? It's just human behavior. Human Factors 101 is just the people will do things uh, when you don't expect them or you have to incentivize that human behavior, but I don't think the incentive is strong enough for to get a player not to sit in the back. So. Unless they're thinking they're going to win the game at the very, very last minute that everybody else dies and they just come in and mop up everybody at the end of the game, that that is the logic there. I guess that is the case, but I don't understand it either. So, whatever. There's another kill for us as a destroyer player. Here we got all three caps. Okay, now what? What's the enemy team going to do now? See, are you going to get more points by sitting in the back and not doing anything and not being engaging? Then I guess that's their logic. We can just win the game now with uh, just having the three caps. Uh, again, this is the majority of World of Warship. If you haven't figured it out, the majority of World of Warship games are won by literally just capping points, killing the other store, and that's it. That's the game. And now it's just a, a shooting match at the very end to see who can shoot better and hopefully use RNG to their favor. But, I mean, this is it. I mean, what more can you do in, in at this point? See, I mean, guys running away. What, what is that going to do? I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sorry. This is just funny. Uh, yeah, even people are laughing in the, the chat about, yeah, Lisa Palmer and saying, yeah, I mean, you saving your ship, it's not going to do anything for you. I mean, you try. I guess they're trying to save their star or whatever. Again, that's a very poor incentive. Like, oh, if I have more points at the end, if I stay alive the longest, I'll save a star. It's like, okay, that doesn't do anything either. So let's see. Where's this? Do I have enough health? I got a minute left before the game ends. So let's just shoot this guy just for fun. See, I get the combat scout achievement because guess what? I'm killing everybody, and I'm also spotting. Isn't that cool? Look, I'll kill another guy. Everybody loves to shoot the destroyer player. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, I get this kill, too. I'm telling you, Kid Akaze is so powerful. Right? Look, I'll probably get this kill as well. Boom, he's dead. Three kills as a destroyer player. Come on. Yeah, that's World of Worship. For, that's why I think the Destroyer role is so powerful, man. You can do so much devastation just in a Destroyer alone, especially a Gunboat Destroyer. That was fun, though, wasn't it, guys? As always, thanks for your support, guys. If you guys are still with me right now talking, it's really cool uh, to have you uh, support channel, watch it, and having fun, learning something from it, and uh, also recommending ideas as well for me to do uh, videos. If you have any recommendations on something, let me know, and uh, I'll try to get back to the comments. Again, I am busy right now trying to you know, study up for this uh, test for I have to do for uh, getting a type rating uh, for the airline. So forgive me. Here we go. Cool. Let's take another ship out. What other destroyer do we have to play? I'll probably play like two more before I got to go do some other things. So we saw a Friesland earlier. Let's play the Friesland so you guys can see what that is. Friesland, really fun. Uh, this thing is literally like a, a gunboat fun ship or destroyer to play. It is super, super fun. Focuses purely on gunboat power. The downside, I believe it is, what is the concealment on this thing? That's probably the downside. Hey, compliment. Way to go, guys. Thanks. 6.4 concealment. So very, very poor concealment, but the guns reload in 1.6 seconds. So you kind of got Holland and, I'm not Holland, uh, small end reload abilities at a tier 9, but the concealment is really, really crappy. It's got a 5-kilometer hydro, uh, but... 
what's five kilometers really these days? Uh, I don't know. So uh, these are the flags that run. Here's the gun build. And the what I built for the um, majority of my gun budget stores lately right now is definitely having the radio location because you need that situational awareness and fearless brawler because I got no smoke. I'm just going to be spotted the whole time. Why not take a 10% reload? I don't get, I don't really go for a main battery AA specials anymore because 5%, if you think about it in the long run, 5% of a small number is still a small number. If you do the math, 5% of a 1.6 second reload, you don't even get, you, I mean, take half of, of one, 0.1 second, taking half of that. Uh, it's just not, you know, you don't really see much of a benefit. Uh, what what is a 0 .05 second reload uh, on you know destroy guns? Uh, if you can see a difference in it, maybe it's you on numbers stat wise, yeah, you get a little bit more. But in the in the long run, I just want that fast. Anything below two seconds is quick for me. It's really about just landing the shells and being able to hit something. What's good good are you if you can't even? What good is your reload if you can't even hit something? Right. So. Uh, oh man, we got a, a submarine in the game. Yay! Fun police is also here. I don't like submarines if you uh, already tell. Uh, carriers and submarines are the anti-fun police or fun police however you want to say it but yeah I don't like them it, it's really difficult to play against submarines uh, especially if you don't have the height and again I don't understand why the hydro can detect a submarine out look look at the the, the problem submarines are only spotted at two kilometers if they're below at maximum depth so I, I literally have to drive almost to two kilometers to the submarine and that that, that is risking so much of your ship right there uh, that's why I hate submarines so much anyways I don't play submarines if you can already tell Cool thing I like about the freeze landing, guns are 360, and let's see here. The front turret, uh, the back turret goes 360, so you don't have to turn your ship to get it to go that way. And, yeah, the front gun as well. So 360 turrets means it doesn't matter where you're aiming the guns. The guns will take the shortest path to get to where you need to aim, so you don't have to worry about maneuvering your ship to maximize effectiveness of your guns. I really like that. The AP and the HE are awesome. HE is a 20-millimeter pin. The AP is, you got to be careful when you're going up a gearing because the gearing has that 21 mil plate or armor plating, so it can shatter some of your shells. Uh, I, the AP is 120, so yeah, the AP is good. It's okay. Yeah. I used to just use AP on the cruisers, light cruisers, and maybe initial uh, engagement with the um, destroyer. I would fire AP, but with the reload rate and um, what you got on the freezer, I just keep it in HE for now, unless I'm going against somebody that's got armor plating. Fletcher shouldn't be, be okay. Encounter, I'll use AP on. Everything else, their battleships, I'll burn. I'm more worried about this submarine guy. I'll turn my AA off. That's a good technique for um, players. If there are no carriers or hybrid carriers in the game, turn your AA off so you're not spotted. You can, But the AA, I'm telling you, the Freeze does have an incredible AA um, capability, especially with the defensive fire consumable. Very strong against. You'll see it can become a very good AA platform. But we're not going to focus on that right now. We're focusing on uh, just submarine and destroyer gameplay. It looks like I got a threat out here. Let my teammate know. Having good communication is also key. Keeping my HE ready to go. Now, I'm not going to rush into my death there and go to the cap. I have an Alaska to radar if I need it. I, they don't have any radar. There's that smoke. I can see where that smoke's at. We just got to wait for Alaska to pop that radar. And let's see what's going to happen here. Is he hiding? Is he hiding that encounter? I'm worried about that too. See, when I see a, yeah, see, when I see a good player doing that, and that means he's smoking up his team. That means that is a scary idea right there. Ooh, I'm spotted. Who am I spotted by? Fletcher, probably. Yep. No, oh, bad aiming on my part. Come on, no, not a single hit. Now he just launched torpedo, so I gotta get out of here. So let's pop the, the, the hydro. I'm trying to get as much damage as I can off the of Fletcher. He doesn't have any heals, neither do I. So anything I can take off him now will pay dividends. Okay, let's pop smoke on the FDG. Let's see if we can get let's get see if we can help our teammate get the FGG down. Oh man, I got fire. I got a fire on me. All right, let's see if we can. Okay, so this is a bad spot for the FDG. So I know he's pushing in on solo, so he's probably going to die. Just, just He's just going to get burned down. All right, we damage con that fire. I cannot stay here too long because of those Fletcher torpedoes, but we're going to see if we can burn down this guy as much as we can. Look at the power. The reload rate on this thing is amazing. 1.4 for the drone rush kicking in. We'd be better if we had Fearless Fire. We're just going to keep burning this guy down. Look at that. We're our bigger threat. The point where the, the uh, FDR has to turn his guns. 
Oh, he's looking. He's looking. Oh, man. He's in the smoke. Oh, we got a Rupert on our right here, too. Yeah, there's that Fletcher. I mean, all right. Priorities are destroyers, right, guys? Our smoke still lasts for another minute. There, we got a fire in the Fletcher. Way to go. So hopefully the Fletcher burns down. Yep, he's burning down. All right, where am I in the smoke? I got plenty of smoke. Keep firing. Anything helps. Anything will help and kill this guy. There we go. Yep, there's those torpedoes I was telling you about. All right, Rupric is stationary. All right, so always never... Uh, the biggest thing is if you're sitting in smoke, be no, n be mindful that there are torpedoes going to see exactly into the smoke. So I knew the Fletcher was going to do that. Unfortunately, I had the Hydro up, and then we could spot those early. Now it's time to kill the Rupric, and then we'll help our team... We got too much. We got a massive force over here, anyway, so we're good. I'll take Alpha, and also keep the Fletcher at bay, so my team doesn't get uh, torpedoed broadside. So we'll keep pushing that Fletcher. North Carolina on their side is just out in the distance, out to lunch. See, their North Carolina is just ineffective right here, Una in a unable to use their guns for any kind of effective purpose. So we're gonna go ahead and push with the last known location of the Fletcher is. Yep, he is right here. See, because the Fletcher, the Rupric was my first target, but it's in my RPF switch to over this direction. Which he's closer than the Rupric, so that means he's right here. So we're going to push that Fletcher right there and get him going. North Carolina is also there. Let's see if we can go ahead and push. Let's go ahead and push the Fletcher. He's almost dead. Rupric's probably going around the island. We're not too worried about him. The only threat is the North Carolina looking on our left here. So let's go ahead and push... Fletcher, and maybe push all the way through to Bravo. Yep, oh, Rupric is right there. Have our team shoot that guy. See, Rupric's there, and it's, he's still not the closest target. So the closest target to me is the Fletcher. So I am not going to push too, too heavy here. There's torpedoes. We spotted torpedoes for him. He's probably hiding behind the island right here. Yep, he's right there behind the island. That's why RPF is so crucial, guys. Come on, somebody kill the Rupert. Goodness gracious. So we're capping for our team right here. Yep. Fletcher is behind this island, so we'll probably we'll take him out. North Carolina, how he's doing. Yeah, he's okay. He's being taken on by the other guys. This guy is healing too, man. Come on. Man, I so want to shoot this Rupert, but I don't want to give away my position. We'll take the shots. Yep, he fired at us. He would rather fire at us. Look at that. All his guns were firing at us. He would rather have fired at us more than anybody else. All right, here we go. We got the Hydro up. We're going to spot this. See, that's why it's good to have Hydro up. So I know where he's at. See that smoke? Where that smoke cloud is going? He's right there, center of the smoke. That's where we're going to get him. So we're going to rush the smoke and follow this guy out of here. See? Being a good destroyer player, spotting for your team, capping for your team, hunting the destroyers down for your team so they can have a nice day shooting the big big ships. Well, we, f we focus on the small ships. So good thing about having 360 guns, you can keep them facing forward and you can shoot left or right. That's another good thing. So we're going to see if we can push the smoke. Where is he firing from? Oh, behind the island. He's got RPF on me as well, so he knows where I'm at. Ah, we got taken out by the encounter. We could still lose this, guys. So, four on three now. That's why I never give up. The whole team at Charlie's dead. Mm. My Hydro's about to run out. 
This is not good. There we go. All right, we killed all destroyers. Now we're going to go for Bravo and win this game on points. So you notice the game, name of the game is kill destroyers and take the points. Take capture the points, and that's how you can win games. So who cares if they get Charlie, right? We already got Bravo, so Bravo Alpha. Yeah, so Friesland, if you don't know what it is, it was a, it is a still a premium ship. It's called the Gronigan now. Uh, they renamed it uh, Tier 9. Uh, very, very heavily focused on the guns. Very good reloads. No torpedoes. AP is also very effective against cruiser players. Uh, the downside, uh, it's got the Hydro 5 kilometers, lasts a little bit long. If you like a defensive AA is there if you need it for against planes, but AA is trash no matter what way you look at it. Uh, speed is okay, 37.8 knots with a flag. So what good things do I see about it? You're just focusing primarily on guns. You have a laser focus on the objective. That's why it's good. It's got very good reloads. Downside, it has very poor concealment. 6.4, you can see everything out spots me. Uh, majority of the time and uh, really it's a just a he sp spamming fl uh, big ship burner so that's that's the biggest thing about the friesland so that's why i like it a lot because i'm a dd gunboat man i like burning down a lot of shit but uh for effectiveness wise uh is it in today's meta i don't know with a lot of the radar submarines and everything going on today uh it may be still okay at tier 9 tier 10 is a push tier 11 definitely is really it struggles uh, with the amount of gimmicks and everything out there today uh, with, you know, a six kilometer hydro. If I went up against a lot of the German destroyers with six kilometer hydro, I lose. Because even if my smoke and hydro, that's my gimmick is I hide in the smoke, use the hydro farm ships. But man, if they got that six kilometer hydro or even radar, I'm a sitting duck and I don't have any heals. That's another downside. Look, my maxed out 20,000 HP right there. So it doesn't have enough health to survive the gun duel. So that's why it's really poor in that regard. You got to be very, very careful. Uh, speed is, like I said, it's not there, uh, especially with the amount of uh, speed, uh, go, go fast boats that you have that are really, really strong at tier 10. Man, it's, it's a struggle, but it is fun. If you can get this thing to work uh, and just play conservative, don't rush to your death, hide your HP, use your smokes uh, as much as you can. Uh, so it masks your ability. I mean, you'll take a lot of damage in this thing, but if you can survive in uh, you know the smoke and just keeping yourself alive in the long run, then it is an effective ship. Uh, but really, I mean, I think it got kind of power crept in a sense because it's just not able to, you know, survive the long gun duels uh, that you're supposed to have. Let's see here. What is this guy doing? Encounter? He has smoke. Oh, he has crawling smoke. Okay, here's the power of the, the, um, the AP. Let's see what the AP can do here. Okay, there will pop smoke. Look at that power of the AP right there. It's pretty strong. See, on light cruisers, it can do a lot of damage, so it's, it's pretty strong in that regard, but yeah. Oh, slap by the Alaska. Way to go. Nice shot, buddy. Good game, everyone. I have to compliment you on that one. That was a good shot. And all that's left is the pesky submarine, the fun police. Mr. Anti-Fun. Anyways, hope you guys are doing well. That'll be the end of my video right there. I think I played enough ships right there. I'm just letting you know I'm back. Uh, you know, we'll start doing some more videos here again. I'll get some more questions, anything we can do to just entertain you guys. That's all I'm here. I'm just an entertainer, having fun, uh, learning something at the same time, making good friends. So as always, hope you guys are doing well. Like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate all the support. Yeah, we got some steel right there, just winning those games right there, and that's pretty fun. As always, uh, thanks for your support. And again, you always stay safe out there. If you see me uh, out in the game, say hi, and uh, definitely we'll talk with you soon. All right, you guys stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.